everyone, it's Shannon. I am so incredibly excited about today's video. I'm sharing the best, most high-end Dollar Tree DIY fall projects with you in this video. It is going to be chock full of some of the most amazing ideas. I wanna welcome you here to my channel, The Daily DIYer, and I also wanna thank the original Super Glue for sponsoring this video. We're gonna jump right into this very first project that has the Dollar Tree foam pumpkins featured along with the original super glues total tape i'm going to show you more about this awesome product here in just a little bit but we're going to prep our foam pumpkins i have three of them here we're going to make a really simple topiary so i started by taking the stems off of the top there's also some little toothpicks in there that you'll have to remove as well and i'm going to be painting each pumpkin a different color so the first one is in the color pumpkin by waverly which is a chalk paint my next one is an acrylic paint in the color King's Gold by Apple Barrel. And then the next one is a mocha color by Waverly as well. But you can use similar colors too. Just kind of raid your own craft stash. Now that our pumpkins are painted, we're going to distress them a little bit with some brown acrylic paint and the help of a baby wipe. So maybe you've never tried this before. This is a great way to kind of distress your projects. You just add some of your acrylic paint to a baby wipe kind of sparingly and then rub it into your project. The baby wipe actually allows the paint to be smeared so it's not so stark dark in color and you kind of get that see-through kind of tone. So you can take some off as you need it, add more as you need it. You kind of want to focus on those little grooves in your pumpkin to get that realistic look. Another element of this topiary is a Dollar Tree glass candle holder, which I'm also painting with some black chalk paint. So now that we have all of our elements painted, we're going to use the original super glues total tape to put this all together. The great thing about this product is it works on all materials. So it's going to work on our painted surfaces. It's going to work on our styrofoam. It's going to work on glass. And it's basically a super strong, heavy duty, double sided tape that also has a mesh reinforcement, which makes it that much more strong. So I'm applying just a little bit of this onto the top of my candlestick. This product comes on a roll that you see me using here but it also comes in pre-cut strips. So if you're needing a project to go even more quickly, you can use that too. This way, I really like the rolls because I can cut the tape down to whatever size I'm needing, which I needed smaller strips for this project. And you can see here, once I applied my pumpkin onto that candlestick, stuck it down, it is an instant bond and it's a super strong bond as well. So you saw me just kind of shaking it. It's not gonna come apart, you guys. This is awesome, awesome stuff. A game changer in your craft room. I'm also applying some of this total tape underneath and in between each one of those pumpkins layers and stacking them one on top of each other. Another reason I really love this total tape is that there is no dry time. So you have instant go with your projects, makes them go much more quickly. I will make sure to link total tape down in the description box below. Highly recommend adding this to your craft stash. Now for the top, I found a dead stick in my yard. I'm going to apply that to the very top pumpkin, just sticking it right down into that styrofoam to give it a stem. Now I love the look of these topiaries. You could get really creative and do them in different colors. Use larger pumpkins and make larger topiaries if you want, but this is such a cute and simple and quick and easy fall DIY project. Up next, we're going to make some plates that are so inexpensive using some vinyl on some Dollar Tree plates. This is such an easy way to dress up a fall tablescape, whether it is for your Thanksgiving meal or just your fall decor and display um, during the fall month. So I've just cut out the word thankful four different times on a sheet of black matte vinyl and I used the font Magnolia Sky. So if you have a vinyl machine, you can recreate this. These are the small little plates, uh, the dessert plates you can get from Dollar Tree. And I'm just simply applying that decal right to the middle of each one of the plates. You can see here I have a cute set up for a tablescape 
shape. These would be cute on a coffee bar or just to use in your kitchen too. Now we're gonna make a cute wall display using some inexpensive cardstock, and I'm cutting out a leaf shape with my Cricut machine here, but you can also hand cut these out if you don't have a vinyl cutter. And I am just cutting this out. You can also use construction paper, so get creative, use what you have around the house. I did end up cutting out lots of these in three different sizes, so I would have kind of variation once I go to apply these on the wall. And I'm gonna be doing that with with some regular sticky tack that you can find at Dollar Tree too, and just applying them in kind of a wind swept pattern on the wall over my mantle. It makes a really pretty and simple and extremely inexpensive fall display. Now you can find these really great crates at Dollar Tree right now in those two different styles. My crate is actually from the Target Dollar Spot, but keep that in mind whenever you are searching for these, check Dollar Tree. I'm turning mine into a really simple pumpkin by painting the entire crate orange. First, so this is the color pumpkin by Waverly, that chalk paint that I used earlier. And then to make a stem, I'm just cutting down a stick with my handsaw and miter box. You probably could even break this if you needed to and didn't have a saw. I just wanted kind of a flat surface because I'm gonna be attaching this to the top of my little crate with some hot glue, and then also adding a little bit of embellishment on the top as well. Super duper simple, quick and easy. Now here's another idea you can use with those crates. Now obviously, again, I'm using one from the Target Dollar Spot, which is only a couple dollars, but again, you can find them cheaper at Dollar Tree in those two different styles that I showed you earlier. This one, I'm going to be painting completely white. You wanna do the back and the sides because you'll actually see through those crates and you'll see some of the unfinished pieces if you don't paint the entire thing. This one, I decided to turn into a sign, so I'm applying a vinyl decal to this that says pumpkin patch five miles with the arrow and if you don't have a vinyl machine of course you can also just use a black marker or even an orange marker would be really cute to apply a cute little similar design to the front of yours to make a simple fall wreath. Now keep in mind Dollar Tree has these similar ones for only a dollar obviously. The one I'm going to feature here is from the Target Dollar Spot and it was about three dollars. So depending on your budget you can use one or the other and I'm seriously just keeping this so so simple. This is some dried wheat that is old. I've had it for years and years. It's gone in different vases 
and displays for fall, even outside decor. And I just keep using it over and over again. So it's a good investment. I'm just wiring that in two different directions onto my wreath and adding some Dollar Tree cotton stems to this and also adding a burlap bow, which the burlap is from Dollar Tree too. I love this stuff that you can find this time of year. It's actually really good quality and you can twist up a bow real quick and simple using some jute as the center and then tying it onto your wreath. So this is just a cute idea. You could layer this up and even add more wheat to make it more full if you want, but I love the simplicity of this one. Now we're gonna make a standing welcome pumpkin. So check out Dollar Tree. They have these great wooden pre-cut unfinished wood pumpkins for only a dollar. Mine is from the Target Dollar Spot. It was $5, but it is much larger and it's also much more thick. So it makes it a little bit easier for us to complete this project, but it's totally doable if you use the Dollar Tree pumpkin too to get a similar look. So this one, I am giving some white chalk paint and I really wanted this one to kind of look more rustic. So I'm also adding a little bit of brown paint to rough it up. And I also painted this scrap piece of one by three as the base. And I'm gonna be attaching it from the underneath side with some screws. Now, if you're using the, or the Dollar Tree pumpkin, what you'd wanna do is just add some dowel rods to the back, kind of screw some little holes into the top of your base piece, and then insert your dowel rods into the base and hot glue your pumpkin up against those dowel rods. So it's a very similar concept, but since my pumpkin was so thick and hefty, I was able to screw right up from the bottom of my base plate up into the pumpkin. I thought it'd be cute too to give this a decal to the front and put a welcome black decal on the front here so I could put it on my front porch as a little welcome sign. Next is a really unique way to transform a Dollar Tree canister into a pumpkin. I thought these round guys looked so much like a pumpkin. So of course we need to paint it orange first. I had this orange spray paint on hand, but it was a glossy finish and it just looked a little bit too shiny for me. So what I did after I sprayed a couple coats onto it and let it dry, I then came back in with some brown acrylic paint to kind of distress it. I also added some of that same brown paint to the top of the lid to make that look like a stem. And then to embellish it, I added some raffia that you can find at Dollar Tree too. I just tied some around and tied a bow around that stem. Super cute for a kitchen or a fun way to kind of keep candies and things close to your front door in an entryway. Now I am absolutely obsessed with copper during the fall. Let me know down in the comments below if you love copper too. It just adds that orangish kind of glow. And so I try to put it throughout our home. And when Dollar Tree came out with these copper chargers, I had to buy several of them because they are so, so pretty. So this one I decided to kind of turn into a cute little sign and give it the look of kind of a pumpkin since it has that orangish glow to it. So I added that decal to the middle first. I'm going to be using some other elements from Dollar Tree, including this leather uh, ribbon that they carry. And I cut it into the shape of a stem, added that to the top and added a burlap bow to the top of that too. And then I also cut out some little burlap leaves to the top to kind of dress it up even more. So 
So I feel like this would be so pretty on a front door in replacement of a wreath, something a little bit different. But you can also prop it up in a cabinet to display or even put it on a plate stand so that it doesn't kind of roll or tip over. But look at that gorgeous glow. I just love it so, so much. Now this next project is a pumpkin wreath and I have to say I'm not 100% happy with this wreath so you guys let me know down in the comments what you would do to maybe make it look a little bit better but I started with one of these wood blend wreaths that you can get from Dollar Tree and gave it a couple coats of that orange glossy spray paint. Again I wasn't happy with that glossy finish so I did distress it a little bit with some brown acrylic paint again and then the top I wanted to make this look like a pumpkin obviously so I rolled up some burlap and twisted it kind of in a circle or cylinder so that I could add that onto the top added a bow and like I said it just didn't come out quite as nice as that I had hoped so I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on better ideas for this maybe covering up the center adding something to the center I'm not quite sure but it still gives you that look of a pumpkin that I was going for just maybe it needed something different or something changed Regardless of how this turned out, I hope that this tutorial at least inspired you and gave you an idea and maybe you can do it different, differently or better when you go to recreate it. So Dollar Tree has had this wire jute for some time and I never knew what to do with it until fall rolled around. I decided I was going to use it to make a wire pumpkin. The great thing about it being jute and wire in one is that our pumpkin is gonna hold its shape really well. So I'm just taking that wire and twisting it into a circle. I also secured it at the top and the bottom so that it would stay together in those spots and then just pulled apart, apart the wire so it would have that pumpkin shape. Kind of pushed down the top too so it would kind of indent up there. And then also added a little stick to the top of this so that it would have a stem. And it's simple little touches like those burlap leaves that kind of give it more of that pumpkin look. Loving the simplicity of this and the more primitive look. Super cute with this fall decor. Now this next pumpkin is probably my most favorite pumpkin that I've ever made using Dollar Tree supplies. It is so simple too. It is a foam pumpkin from Dollar Tree that I just wrapped in some nautical rope. I just love how this really turned out in the end. But it took about three packages of the nautical rope to get all the way around and cover the entire pumpkin. I did add another stick for a stem in the top before finishing off wrapping that jute around or the rope around completely to kind of cover up that seam. And I love using those sticks as stems for pumpkins because it looks a little bit more realistic and it has kind of that organic look. So to embellish this, I'm adding some more of those burlap leaves that I cut from ribbon and a couple of those cotton stems from Dollar Tree too. Now,
Now, if you're kind of short on time, these next several projects are really simple, quick and easy. I'm filling a Dollar Tree cylinder vase with some popcorn and then adding in a candle and wrapping the bottom with some raffia. Takes less than five minutes and makes a really quick and easy display. Next up is a super simple way to dress up some Dollar Tree candles. Now I'm using some old leaves that I had on hand, but even Dollar Tree carries bushels of leaves that you can use. And I'm literally just wrapping those leaves onto the candles with some jute. Now, obviously these are not candles that you're gonna wanna use. They are for decorative purposes only, unless you can find the battery powered candles to use instead. Now I nearly passed up these brooms because they had little scarecrows and things on them. But once I peeled all of the excess off of them, I was left with a really nice fall decorative piece that we're gonna dress up with some flannel ribbon from Dollar Tree. I just tied a real simple bow. I also have a full video on how to make bows and I'll link that down below. So if you want more of a step-by-step -step tutorial, definitely check that out. I'll link that at the end of this video too. I just made a really simple bow and then tied it onto the top of this broom and added one of the metal thinkful pieces you can find at Dollar Tree, hot glued that right onto the front. Super simple and easy, but turned out to be a really pretty fall decor piece. Now this next layered rug look will literally take you only about five minutes to. I have two of the woven rugs from Dollar Tree and this grateful doormat from Dollar Tree. And we're literally just going to layer these up, but I did wanna go ahead and glue the woven rugs together. That's gonna make them twice as big, obviously. And I am actually using some fabric hot glue sticks and I'll link those down below too. Those are so handy, especially if you do not like to sew. That is definitely not one of my favorite crafting pastimes. Totally doable though. And I'm just adding that glue right down the middle so I can layer them up and then taking them, putting them in front of the front door and putting that great full doormat right on top there. So quick and for only $3, you cannot replicate this for cheaper. A lot of times the under mat or rug is probably around $20 and then probably 15 for the top doormat. So this is a great money saving idea. Dollar Tree always has really great unfinished wood. This arrow caught my eye. I'm gonna turn it into a chalkboard. I love using chalkboards during fall too because it has that rustic kind of farmhouse look. So I'm covering the entire thing with this chalkboard paint. Dollar Tree even started carrying their own kind of chalkboard paint. So keep an eye out for that. This I just got from Walmart and giving this two coats to make sure I have really good coverage. Now the great thing about this project too is you can use it for different holidays or different seasons if you want. And a great tip is to take your regular chalk and rub it completely over your entire surface and then erase it. It's gonna fill in all of those pores. So whenever you go to write on it, when you go to erase again, it is not gonna leave that kind of ghosted shadow look from what you wrote previously. It's also gonna give it a really nice textured look too for our fall decor. So once I had that surface prepped, I just took my regular chalk again, added my little message to the front and it was ready to go. I 
I loved these chunky wood pumpkins you could find at Dollar Tree. It was kind of hard to find those orange ones though. So what I would do instead is just grab the white ones because it was easy to paint over. So I am taking my pumpkin chalk paint by Waverly and painting all four of these pumpkins that same color so they would look like a nice set. Now I personally am all about adding that fall texture kind of grungy look to my decor. So I took some brown acrylic paint and kind of ran it around all the edges of the pumpkins a little bit in the center too and kind of wiped some of it off as I went so it was a little bit more transparent. I just like this because it gives it more of a realistic look. And then what I did once it was dry, I used some of the poster stickers that you get from Dollar Tree too, added F-A-L-L -L to spell fall on each one of the pumpkins and added it back on those raffia bows that I picked off in the beginning so that they had that extra special little touch back on there. I just didn't want to paint them and get paint on them so I took them off at the start and then just re-hot glued them back on. So I have these displayed with a little bit of greenery from Dollar Tree and it kind of reminded me of the look of a pumpkin patch. So I have this in my little china cabinet hutch, but this would be so cute on a mantle too. This is a fun way to take something unique and make it look like a pumpkin too. So get creative and find a bottle that maybe you have around your house. Or this one, of course, is from Dollar Tree. We're gonna make it look like a little pumpkin guy, which I think would be so cute in a kitchen display or in a china cabinet like I showed you before. I'm just painting the bottom half, which was kind of rounded with my orange chalk paint. And then the top part, I wanted it to look like a stem. So I grabbed out my jute and hot glue and started wrapping that all the way around to the top. And then one last little embellishment, I added some green leaves onto this. I thought that would be really, really pretty versus the burlap ribbon leaves that I've added in the last few projects. This green really makes this little pumpkin pop. This next one will literally only take you a couple minutes and I love quick projects and this is definitely one with no mess. I'm starting with these glass pillar candles and also some wood patterned contact paper and just wrapping this around a bottom portion of this candle. It makes these candles look like they're sitting on little wood pedestals and I will show you what that looks like here in just a minute but we're going to add a little bit to this display. I'm starting by painting these ceramic dishes which I believe were jewelry dishes at Dollar Tree and painted them with some light gray chalk paint. And then for the tops of those, I spray painted some Dollar Tree vases with some frosted glass spray paint, stuck in some of Dollar Tree's hydrangeas and cattails. And then the way that I displayed these is actually on a mantle and the entire mantle is 100% Dollar Tree. So I have a full video on that and I'll link that down below too if you wanna check out how I made those little sconces on the sides with Dollar Tree items, the big frame in the middle, and then the whole display on the front. You'll even see my jute pumpkin that I showed you how to make earlier.
I love using garland in all of my holiday decor, so I have several different ideas I'm gonna share with you on how to achieve a few different looks. First, I have four of these cotton stems from Dollar Tree, and I'm just cutting off the longer portion of the stem, and we're gonna attach all of these together end to end and kind of twist them together. I also use some floral wire to help hold it all together. And then to add a little bit more texture, the burlap leaves from Dollar Tree are really pretty too, and they already have little wires attached to them, so I just wrap those wires onto the garland. So you can see I have mine displayed in our entryway, but this would be so pretty on a coffee bar or on the front of a buffet, or if you have a mantle, this would be a beautiful piece to display there too. Another garland idea is using an old book, or my book is from Dollar Tree, and I just used a template that is from Dollar Tree too. It's one of their wooden leaves, and cut several of the book pages out at one time. Now, you can also use maybe an old book that you already have, or grab one from the thrift store. Usually, they're under a dollar there, or at a yard sale, so there's some different ideas for you, or even use cardstock in colors that you like, and I just cut out lots of these so I could add them onto a string of jute, and I used some small mini clothespins from Dollar Tree to attach them onto the jute. Now I have to give you props if you are still watching at this point. I know this is a long video filled to the brim with lots of ideas and inspiration. So I hope you're finding lots of great ideas. If you are still watching, hit that thumbs up button and we still have lots more ideas to go. So here I'm just adding those leaves to the jute with the clothespins in my entryway, but I also thought it'd be cute on my coffee bar. So I also wanted to show it to you displayed over there. And now another really simple garland idea that has a farmhouse flair to it is using these wooden unfinished pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I painted them all out with some white chalk paint and then I wanted to give them a shiplap look. I love shiplap. I know it's really, really popular right now, but it's also easy to add little bits of it here and there if you don't have it in your home, but love the look. So once this paint had dried, I'm gonna use a fine tip Sharpie marker and just the packaging so I I had a straight edge and I'm drawing horizontal lines all the way across the pumpkins and then here and there adding a vertical line and a couple little dots and those little dots kind of mimic 
uh, nail holes. So you get that shiplap look really, really simple and easy. I'm also going to be adding these pumpkins onto a jute string. Again, love that rustic look. It's so pretty for fall. And then I'm also adding some little embellishments onto that jute to kind of fill it in. So I have some uh, uh, fabric that I'm adding and also some more jute. The fabric that I'm using is a scarf from Dollar Tree, but you can get ribbon and you can get fabric from the fabric store like this too, whatever matches your home's decor, and also some burlap. And I'm just wrapping that and tying that onto the string in between each one of those pumpkins. Now this next project, it looks like Dollar Tree is gonna have signs that look like this this year, but when I created this tutorial, mine had this thankful with a buffalo check. They usually change up the design every year and we're gonna be using three of these and they're kind of like a raised uh, MDF type signs. They're pretty hefty and I wanted to turn mine into sort of like a little bud vase. So I'm marking equally distant holes and using my drill and a paddle bit to drill through the tops of two of these. And of course, measuring to make sure each one is spaced apart. Alright, so the idea behind this was I found these cute little plastic test tubes at Dollar Tree and I wanted to make this into sort of a bud vase and they fit right down into those holes that I drilled but they were a little bit long so I needed to drill holes again through the second sign so they would slip through and this is why we need three of these because the bottom one we are not going to drill holes in and that is going to be our bottom. So you're gonna flip this one upside down and then apply one of the ones with holes on top of that. And I also painted the top of that third sign, applying all of this with just some regular craft glue. And then my test tubes will slide right down in there perfectly. But I wanna stress up those test tubes a little bit too because they have sort of that threading around the top, so I just hit that with some jute.
And now to embellish, I have some Dollar Tree cotton stems that I'm going to put into those little test tubes. I just pulled this all apart so I had individual little cotton stems and put a couple into each one. And then the front, I added one of the galvanized metal words from Dollar Tree too with some glue dots. Hobby Lobby had some cute pumpkins that had little baskets on the front. So I'm recreating one of those with a Dollar Tree pumpkin. I drilled a couple holes into the front and sanded it down so it was smooth. And now we're going to paint this pumpkin. Now mine is gonna be white, but of course paint yours whatever color you want. I wanted that rustic look, so I just did one coat and let some of that wood show through from the back. Next up, I have a free printable for you, which I will link down in the description box below. And what I did is print it out and then ripped the edges. I wanted it to look really rustic. So I also used some coffee and some coffee grinds and tinted the paper so it had more of a rustic and vintagey look. I really love this technique and it's super simple. Once it's dry, you can add it onto your project. But we're also going to cover the stem of this pumpkin with some Dollar Tree burlap ribbon. Just added some tacky glue onto there, let it dry, and then cut out around the stem so I would have that kind of textured stem look and then I can add on this little metal leaf which was from the front of this sign that I didn't want to throw away because I like I said I love copper. I also painted this Dollar Tree basket with a copper spray paint to match and used some jute to tie it onto the front. Then I added some glue dots, which you can also get from Dollar Tree onto the back of my rustic paper. And so that was pretty much it. Now the basket kind of had those holes in the bottom. So I did put some burlap in the bottom of the basket and added some pumpkins for display. These are my favorite signs at Dollar Tree during Halloween. They look like little picket fences, so I just grabbed several of them. This one, we're gonna turn from a Halloween sign into a fall sign. So I'm using the back side of this and giving it one coat of white chalk paint. Again, letting some of that wood tone show through so it has more of a rustic look. Now we wanna get sort of that picket look, like it's put together like a palette sign. So these are wooden rulers. They are out during the back to school time. I took the plastic parts off of the front, so I just had the wood pieces left, cut them the width of my sign, and then painted them with some brown acrylic paint. 
So now this technique is similar to the one that we used earlier in the first project with the foam pumpkins. I'm using a baby wipe to just kind of push the paint around. It gives it more of a transparent look than a thick brown coverage. So you see some of the wood on your project showing through. So that's much more of a wood stained look than a painted wood look. So now we're gonna put all of this together. I am using a ruler to make sure I apply those ruler pieces evenly at the top and the bottom. And then I'm also applying decals in the letters F, L, L, because our leaf is going to replace the A. If you don't have vinyl, of course, you can use those stickers, the poster stickers from Dollar Tree, or you could even just use a marker and write them in yourself. This is definitely one of my favorite fall projects that I've ever created. It definitely doesn't look like Dollar Tree and looks much more high end and it only cost a couple dollars. Now we're going to make a harvest sign using something maybe you've never thought of using from Dollar Tree. Of course, I'm starting with an eight by 10 size frame, taking all the pieces out, including the metal pieces that keep your frame together. And we're using a laundry bag for the middle of this. So I was thinking I really wanted sort of a chicken wire look, but Dollar Tree doesn't really have anything similar. So I found this mesh from a bag and I am hot gluing that to the inside edge of my frame using some dowel rods to help stretch it in all four directions. So I know it probably doesn't look like much yet, but we will get there and I'm gonna make some magic happen here shortly. I do need to cut off all of that excess material from the edges so you do not see it from the front. let that glue sit up and cure for a little bit before I paint it and I'm gonna work on the front design so I have these burlap leaves from Dollar Tree and I wanted them to stand out a little bit so I'm removing the wire that is glued onto the back and I'm taking my white chalk paint and going around the edges I didn't want white leaves but I didn't want the leaves to kind of blend into the background so this is gonna help kind of help it stand out a little bit more And now to really make this mesh look way more like metal. And I was thinking it probably had more of a gray tone than a black tone. So I'm using a dark gray chalk paint and taped off all the edges of the frame and painted the entire mesh surface with a foam paintbrush.
definitely an improvement and looks so much more like metal now. And I can add those embellishments onto the front of the frame, including those burlap leaves and one of those harvest metal accent pieces. It's also some of the most simple, easy touches that can change the look of something, including these little acorns that are from Dollar Tree. They're actually made out of foam, but the tops of them are real acorns, I believe. <laughs> so I wanted these to have more of a farmhouse look. Now, obviously acorns don't look like this in nature, but if you have more of a neutral color scheme, then this would be a great way to incorporate these and have a farmhouse look and so what I did is painted these gray and then let that dry and then went over and dry brushed a layer of white so it gives it a unrealistic look I do understand that but maybe something that matches your decor a little bit more And now we're gonna take a Dollar Tree sign and make it look a little bit more heightened. So this one, I'm using the back side of it. It comes on a little wooden stand too. And I'm painting the entire thing out with white chalk paint just so it has a nice base because I also want to Mod Podge over this with a Dollar Tree scarf. And they're a little bit see-through instead of like a normal fabric. They're really kind of thin and airy. So I wanted it to have a nice background to pop against. Once my paint was dry, I'm using some Mod Podge that you can get at Dollar Tree too. You just put a nice layer onto your surface, lay your fabric or your paper on top, smooth it all out, get all the air bubbles and wrinkles out, and then you go over that again with another layer of Mod Podge to seal it all in. Now it does take probably a good hour for this to dry. It probably wouldn't hurt to let it sit overnight if you want it completely dried and cured. I let mine sit for about an hour and then came back in with a razor blade and cut around the edges to get off all of the excess fabric. Then the edges looked a little bit messy, so I'm coming in with my black chalk paint and just go around the edges. That way it gives it more of like a purposeful look of being messy, whereas my fabric just was kind of frayed and not looking like it was finished. So this kind of hides all of those imperfections. And now to embellish a little bit, I have my jute and one of these cute little wooden leaf stickers that Dollar Tree also carries. So I don't know why, but I always feel like pumpkins need little leaves on them. So that's why all of my pumpkins throughout this have pretty much all had leaves. But I wanted to define the stem of this pumpkin, so I wrapped my jute around and hot glued that into place, and then just glued my little leaf on there too.
Next, this sign was actually inspired by a Target dollar spot sign that I had that said fresh warm pies or something like that on it, but I wanted one that said pumpkin pies on it for fall. So I'm starting with a Dollar Tree 8x10 picture frame and I'm going to paint it out in gray first and dry brush on some white around the edges. And we are going to need the glass on this one. However, whenever you put your glass in and then you use those little metal tabs, they actually stick out and you can see them. So I removed those tabs and I used some glue and some clear tape to help hold this glass to the back of the frame. And then I created a vinyl decal and added that onto the front of my glass. Easy peasy, have a super cute new sign that only cost a couple dollars versus the one that I saw in the store that was closer to 25. This was another cute pumpkin that was sort of a 3D wooden unfinished pumpkin from Dollar Tree that I took apart. We're gonna make a candle holder out of this. So I'm only needing the solid pumpkin and the bottom piece, and I'm painting those both out in white. So again, loving the buffalo check. I wanted my pumpkin to look buffalo check, so I went on to Google, searched uh, buffalo check background, printed myself out a piece of paper. You could also use a piece of scrapbook paper or a piece of fabric or even some leftover Christmas wrapping paper and Mod Podge that onto the front. But I just started by tracing my pumpkin out onto the paper and cutting it out. So again, with Mod Podge, what you do is you layer it onto your surface first, apply whatever you're adding onto your piece, whether it be paper or fabric, lay it on there, smooth it out, and add another layer of your Mod Podge on top to seal it in. And then what I'm doing is using some hot glue to attach the pumpkin onto the back side of this bottom piece that we also painted white. This is a jar candle from Dollar Tree that I'm adding some jute onto and adding that right to the front as a cute little candle holder. Now, obviously, again, this is one that is decorative and you don't wanna light this candle with the jute and the paper and the glue and all that, but it is so cute as a decorative piece. You could also use a battery powered candle here in its place. Now we're gonna be turning one of these Halloween signs over to the back and we're going to be making a fall bucket list. We always have these and I love them because it makes sure that we do all the fun things that we want to during the short fall season. It seems like it goes so fast. So we're making this chalkboard style and like I said, I flipped it over to the back and I'm adding a couple coats of some chalkboard paint, applying a vinyl decal that says fall bucket list at the top and little squares onto each one of those sides and then using it like a chalkboard so we can add our own fun, which is probably different every year onto the next to those boxes. Again, with the leaves, I don't know what it is about leaves, but apparently I love leaves and add them to a lot of different things. These are those little wooden stickers from Dollar Tree that I painted with some brown uh, acrylic paint, added a little distressing with some white chalk paint and added those to the sides of my sign just to dress it up a little bit. But I love this, it kind of makes for a fun family project and then you can check off your fall fun as you go.
Now I still love Ray Dunn and you let me know down in the comments below if you still love Ray Dunn or not too. I still have plenty of coffee mugs and canisters that I use on a daily basis and this is kind of a take or a knockoff. I've made a whole paper full of fall words using the font The Skinny which mimics that really fun Ray Dunn, Ray Dunn font and I'm adding my transfer tape on top and cutting each one of these words apart so you can get creative and what use whatever words you want. Mine I'm kind of going to match to the different pieces that I'm going to add these decals onto. So first is a coffee mug and of course this one is getting pumpkin spice. You let me know down below do you love pumpkin spice or is that not your thing? I definitely, definitely love pumpkin spice. I love the coffee and I love the candles. So this mug is from Dollar Tree. It's my favorite mugs they have because they are straight up and down. They're not curved. You can also find dollar mugs at even Walmart and you just apply your decal right onto the front, get all the wrinkles and bubbles out and you have a permanent decal. Now take note of my cute little gnome off to the side there. I'm going to show you how to make him here shortly too, but let's move on to our next Ray Dunn inspired project which is, let's get there, <laughs> is a cutting board. Dollar Tree has these great cutting boards. I actually use these. Now this one you don't want to use because we're going to Mod Podge some paper onto the back. So this is more of a decorative one, a cute little display you can bring out during the fall and use in your kitchen. I'm cutting the little rubber feet circles out so my paper will sit onto the back of the cutting board and you can still use those feet. Um, and then Mod Podging it onto the back. On the front, I'm adding a Ray Dunn inspired decal. This one says Feast. Now you can use a piece of paper, whatever you want, in whatever colors you want. The one that I used was sort of a shiplap, neutral piece of paper, but this is a fun little accessory to add to your kitchen during the fall season. Letters are a definite must during the fall season as we have our big family gatherings. This one is definitely just decorative though. Since I'm using chalk paint, you don't want to put food on this one, but I'm just covering up a silver metal tray from Dollar Tree with a couple coats of that white chalk paint to cover it up. I wanted it to look a little bit more like an enamel piece, so I'm taking some black chalk paint and kind of hitting it here and there to make it look chippy and then adding another Ray Dunn inspired decal to the middle of this. So here's another fun way to use those chunky black pumpkins like I showed you in the fall set earlier. I am using the back side of this, making sure to get the sticker off and removing that raffia from the top. I wanted this one to look more like a white pumpkin, so yes, I'm painting it gray first. It's a great way to get a weathered wood look. So I painted it gray and then coming back in over the top with the white, and then you'll get some of that gray showing through so it looks more like weathered wood or a rustic pumpkin. Then you'll want to let that paint dry completely before adding a decal to the front. If you don't have a vinyl machine, of course, again, you can use a fine tipped Sharpie marker and just write on a word or use a stencil or stickers too. I added a bit of a Buffalo check ribbon to this to make it match my decor.
Next, these coasters I have used for years. I bring them out all the time for the holidays or the fall season. They are Dollar Tree coasters that I painted with white chalk paint. I did several coats to make sure they were good and covered and then added my decals onto the top of this. You also would want to take these outside and spray them with a clear matte finish so that seals all that in there. It will not destroy your vinyl, although I'm sure some people probably are a little bit worried about that. Don't even and worry about that. Now we're going to add some thicker jute around the edges to finish it off. Earlier we made a cute leaf garland out of book pages. This time we're gonna make a pumpkin out of book pages. And I'm taking a book and cutting it in half and then cutting those halves into half so we have four equal parts. And we're gonna cut a pumpkin shape out of each one of those sections. And you're just gonna draw kind of like a half circle and use your scissors to cut out section at a time. It's kind of hard to cut through all those pages. So you just kind of like pull up a few pages at a time and draw your template again onto the next and so on. So once you have all four of your pumpkin pieces cut, we're going to sit those up and we're going to fan those out and glue those together. Make sure you are hot gluing down the spines of your book so all of your pages can fan out. I also am adding a stick to the top of my pumpkin and yep, another leaf. <laughs> I also wanted to cover up sort of that seam between the stem and the book pages so added some jute there, tied a little bow, added my leaf and it was good to go. This is such a cute and simple project. You could whip out several of these fairly quickly. And now here I come in with the copper again. These are the cutest bottles from Dollar Tree. I just took the metal and plastic off the tops and then spray painted them all with my copper spray paint. So like my little pumpkin patch before, I'm going to have these bottles read fall. So I'm using some Dollar Tree burlap ribbon and cutting them so they will wrap around the fronts of the bottles and then laying those out flat. And I wanted to stencil on these words this time. So I cut out using some contact paper each letter of fall and added those onto the fronts and middles of that burlap. I'm going to be stenciling these on with my white chalk paint and then wrapping them around and gluing them onto the bottles.
And then if you haven't noticed, I love copper. So here comes the copper spray paint again. We're gonna spray this leaf little candy dish from Dollar Tree with the copper spray paint. I did both sides, the top and the bottom, and literally it was that easy to transform something that looks a little chintzy into something much more high-end and beautiful. It still shocks me that Dollar Tree has these great galvanized buckets with the jute wrapped around the top for only a dollar. I feel like that is such a great deal and bargain. And I wanna leave that jute around the top, so I am taping that off with some painter's tape and then using my white chalk paint to give the bottom half a couple coats. I'm also gonna be adding a vinyl decal onto the front of this to make my own personalized and custom base. So I promise you the tutorial on the cute little gnome and this is it. I have a ping pong ball from Dollar Tree that I painted with sort of a peachy tone. Paint yours however you want. And then I have to make his body. So I'm using a bag of beans from Dollar Tree and a Dollar Tree t-shirt as the fabric to cover it up. I'm hot gluing it and wrapping it up like a little burrito so it all stays covered and he's going to have his little body here that'll stand up. I also am using a mop head from Dollar Tree as his beard so I needed to make a little space in the beans for the head of the mop to sit down in. Obviously lots of hot glue here to keep that in place and you kind of see this already starting to come together. Here's his little beard, how cute is that? Now we also need to make him a hat. Now I was trying to make this whole project from Dollar Tree and at the time all I had were t-shirts and these scarves from Dollar Tree. So I cut two triangles out of the t-shirt, layered that up with the scarf because the scarf was just not thick enough fabric. So I layered those up so I would get that pretty buffalo check print. I did that on both sides using some Mod Podge, which did work to cover those triangles with. Once the glue had dried, I cut those triangles out. Now at this point, you can of course just use regular fabric and skip all of this rigmarole and mess that I kind of created. But you know what, it worked in the end and you use what you have on hand and that is the great thing about crafting. I put my pieces together and hot glued up the sides. Again, you can sew if you want to, to kind of create a seamless little side for our hat. I'm also going to sort of fold those ends up and in so I have a nice edge before adding that to the top of my gnome's head. So 
once I have the hat glued into place, we need to now add his nose. So I did leave a little opening underneath the hat and didn't glue down that part since I knew I was gonna tuck his nose up underneath the hat and kind of tucked it down into the mop too. He is so, so cute. And like I've seen, you can make so many different themed gnomes. So get creative and give your little guy some personality. I also wanted to show you that Dollar Tree actually has really amazing things all alone by themselves without doing anything to them. So I thought it'd be fun to show you all the different items that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. You can see them kind of all displayed on my table there. This was a haul, so I knew I had a lot of crafting to do, but I thought it'd be fun to use all these items on the tiered tray without crafting or doing anything to them. So you could see you don't have to actually paint anything, make anything to use Dollar Tree fall items. They are so beautiful, some of them by themselves, especially when you display them on a mantle. Like I will put the link in the description box below if you wanna go see my 100% Dollar Tree fall mantle video or displayed on a tiered tray like this or in an entryway on a buffet table. So I hope that that gives you a little bit of inspiration too. I had so much fun putting this video together. It's nice to look at all of my favorite fall DIYs, having them all in one place. And I'm so glad that you joined me today to see all of these ideas. I would love to know which one of these was your favorite. You can leave that down in the comments below for me. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, come back and join me for more fall seasonal and soon Christmas DIYs. I can't wait to share with you and hit that thumbs up button. I'll also have more great videos popping up on your screen that you can check out next. Thanks so much again and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.